The Bob Hope Show. Transcribed direct from the Veterans Administration Hospital at Long Beach, California. With Les Brown and his band of renown. Our special guest, Bing Crosby. And here he is, Bob Hope. for these boys in the Veterans Hospital. As I look out amongst you, I can see the Christmas spirit everywhere. Red robes and green faces. <laughs> and I said to Dr. Edwards, I'm looking forward to a great show today. Last time I was here, I found out how to make these guys laugh. He said, I know, Hope, but now we keep that stuff locked up. <laughs> I thought this was a hospital, but I never saw such a healthy bunch of guys. In this place, you're not considered ambulatory until you pass the nurse you're chasing. <laughs> and I noticed the modern trend in veterans' hospitals. The new hospital beds have gadgets to do everything. One fellow pushed all the buttons at once to see what would happen. He's now drawing flight pay. <laughs> He'll be in for a landing any day now. And you should see the way these guys speed around the corridors in their wheelchairs. I asked one patient how much longer he expected to be confined. He said, I've been cured for a month. Now all I got to do is serve out the last 90 days of my traffic sentence. <laughs> and, uh, and one patient even had a Christmas spirit while he was being bandaged. He turned to the doctor and said, before you wrap it, I'd like to put a card in. <laughs> the Christmas tree in one of the wards. What a beautiful sight. And the limbs on the tree weren't bad either. <laughs> one soldier took a look at the star on the top of the tree, tree and he said, he's yeah, a brigadier general running this show too. <laughs> I think it was General Lesterbrook, I'm not sure. You can't blame Santa Claus for not wanting to show up at this hospital. Last year, when he stepped out of the fireplace in his red suit, three nurses and a doctor grabbed him, gave him a shot, threw him in bed and screamed, We don't care if you do have a beard, you'll be discharged when we're good and ready. <laughs> I played Santa Claus for my kids. It was great. I had a real Santa Claus suit and came down a real chimney. It was exciting. They had a real fire. <laughs> here at the Long Beach Veterans Hospital. I had dinner here and can these patients eat? The chaplain said, say grace. And between say and grace, they were ready for dessert. <laughs> they served six courses with ten-minute intermissions to carry out the wounded. <laughs> Boy, they really went after the food. I said, how's the stuffing? And the guy stuck his head out of the turkey's mouth and said, fine. <laughs> look really beat. I said, you look like something the cat dragged in. He said, yeah, but he won't drag me out again. I ate him. Oh, Bob, uh, can I introduce our guest now? Not yet, hi. Grandpa Crosby can't come dashing out on the stage like he used to, you know. It takes a little preparation. They've got him backstage hanging upside down by his heels. Well, it's silly, Bob. Why should they be hanging by his heels? Well, he has to stay in that position till his chest slides back where it used to be. <laughs> then they rivet him into a pair of tight leather shorts, so when they turn him right side up, there won't be an avalanche. <laughs> but I got a right to be sore. I will I tell you what happened. It was yesterday afternoon. I was in a department store to buy a gift for Bing. There's Santa Claus standing in the middle of the aisle. I'll go over and say hello to him. Well, jolly old Santa. Well, tonight's Christmas Eve, Santa. Are you going to get into your sleigh and sail over the housetop? No, boy, I'm going to the rendezvous and fly around the chandelier. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Put something in the pot, boy. You, huh? Still working this racket, eh? Oh, don't call this a racket, boy. Every cent I take in is for a noble organization. You've heard of the SPCA? Oh, yeah, 
Yes, the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Yeah, well, this is for the H-E-B-L-F, the homeless cootie birds of Lower Front, Japan. <laughs> Where's that? I've never been able to find out. I hope I locate it. I'd hate to be stuck with all this money. Merry Christmas, everybody. Now, wait a minute. Anyway, boy, I'm not a crook. I really one of the store detectives. I watch the customers to see if they don't steal anything. Oh, you're a store detective? That's right. That's like making King Farouk house mother at Vassar. <laughs> Glasses desperately for her work. Oh, I'm sorry. What is her work? She forges unemployment checks. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Here comes a guy I don't want to meet. What'll I do? Oh, just crouch down behind the counter until he goes by. That's it there. Now he won't see you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hello, mister. Say, aren't you Bing Crosby? Well, that's close enough. Just wrap it up as my present to Mr. Holmes. To me? Hmm? Oh, 
Well, I'll stop that. Oh. As my present to him, lady, wrap up a $500 set of silverware. I'll raise my gift to you to $750. Well, I'll raise mine to you to $1,000. And here's my check to pay for it. A thousand even. Thank you, sir. Now, now, get up your loot thing. Oh, Mr. Crosby doesn't have to pay. Of course not. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. What goes on here? I'm the shill of the silverware department, lad. <laughs> Yes, Gary owns the store. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are many wonderful Christmas stories, such as those written by Dickens and Hans Christian Andersen. But tonight we're going to present a story of Christmas that has never before been told. It's the tale of Bingsy and Bobsy, who, whether you can imagine it or not, were once young. Let us go back through the years. At the home of the host in Cleveland, there is a tiny new arrival. Look at him, Dad, laying on his little blanket. Isn't he just what you wanted for Christmas? No. What I really wanted was a pinball game. Oh, now that's silly. A pinball game doesn't grow up and stay with you through the years. Maybe not, but at least it has all its marbles. Remember, Pa, before the baby came, you went out and bet $50 it would be a boy, and I bet $50 it would be a girl. Yeah. That's a hundred bucks we'll never see again. Bing for years. 
Then one day he walked into my backyard and said, Hi. Where you been? Oh, we moved to Spokane where I finished grammar school, high school, then I enrolled in Gonzaga University from which I graduated with high honors. From there I went to the Sorbonne in Paris where I studied for her and I acquired my master's degree in music. What have you been doing? I finished your skis. <laughs> Double dandy. I don't ski, but they'll keep me from falling down open manholes. I guess. <laughs> Say, who's this cute bit of fluff coming through the gate? Hey. Yoo-hoo, Bobsy. Oh, she's my fiance. She's so crazy about me, she thinks I'm the only guy in the world. Uh, hello, Bobsy. I just thought I'd come over. Well, who's this? Over the river, darling. Skip the gutter. <laughs> Fluffy up your feathers, will you? I'm a chicken inspector. <laughs> I'm Kid Pepper. You can't shake me. Squeeze me, kid. Squeeze me, kid. I'm a lemon. The ushers will not pass among you with thumbs. You're quite a dish, honey. I'm in a generous mood today. You may kiss me if you like. Oh, thank you. Mm. 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 Oh, come on, honey. Let's go where we can be alone. I decided I couldn't let him get away with that, so I yelled, Hey! Come back here, you. Yeah, what do you want? You forgot your skis. <laughs> I didn't see Bing for several years, but he told me he never made any money till the Carnation Company hired him. Crosby's voice made the cows contented. <laughs> when he sang, they turned to each other and say, Thank goodness, Matilda, that didn't come out of me. You're speaking of the tonsils I love. <laughs> I'll take over from here, Robin. To make a name for myself, I went to New York, where I did rather well. I got quite a jolt one day on Broadway when a shabby derelict shuffled up to me and said, Hey, mister, you got a dollar for a cup of coffee? If I'm a bum in this thing, I may as well be a high class one. <laughs> Get away from me, you panhandler. You ought to be ashamed. Haven't you any higher ambition than this? Yeah. What is it? I want to be an engineer in a big train and go lickety split. <laughs> I'm in awful shape. Can you help me? I'm sorry, but I've worked hard here in New York for what I've attained. Had you applied yourself as I did, you might have achieved a place for yourself on Broadway as I am. Now, on your way. Go along. I'm busy. Okay. Hey, you are. Get your morning paper. Oh, I'll head to the Times Express. Bureau. Oh, I took pity on Bob, and I added him to my vaudeville act when my seal died. <laughs> Perfectly, and I soon taught him to sit up, clap his slippers. Oh, what an act it was! By the light, by the everlasting light of the silvery moon, it rhymes with June and croon and spoon and goon and laughs from band is out of tune. <laughs> say, Joe, yeah, Mo. did you hear what the fellow said when he buried the light bulb under the ice house? Now, what did the fellow say when he buried the light bulb under the ice house? Masses in the cold, cold ground. <laughs> That night was Christmas Eve in the little theater we were playing in Kansas. Christmas Eve. A time of warmth and good fellowship, especially among homeless actors. As we sat in our dressing room after the performance, the door opened. The manager of the theater stuck his head in with a genial gleam in his eye. He smiled and said, You no talent, you're so fired! <laughs> fired? For what? That ain't enough of your act this bad, but ever since you've been here, we've been missing popcorn for the machine in the lobby. And all I understand, you're raising this living here in a dressing room with you. A pack of lies. We never stole anything out of the lobby. And our agent's never been in this room. Just pack up and get out. Well, open the trunk. Gee, thanks, fellas. It's hard to breathe through all that popcorn. <laughs> Swell, where's my desk? 
And the man who was most charming and handsome. A very clear description of me. Faye, Junior, go ahead, Peter. So I want you both to meet the man we selected. Well, don't stand there. Hand me the waste paper. Oh, there. no! What are you doing at Long Beach? Well, the shrimp boats landed and I fought my way out of the net. Wish you all the season's best. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.